glass, split feelings, or an unbreakable love? Right now on Miscast Entertainment, here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Get to the chopper! Stand up to my lips, I'm going to make it an offer again. This is Sparta! You're going to need a bigger boat. Welcome back, you miscast miscreants, to another episode of Miscast Entertainment Movie Reviews with your host, JJ. I do pee pee standing up. And your other host, Greg Cafaro. Hello, Governor. <laughs> and straight from across the pond, Evil Corkin reacts. That was racist. racist. I felt that racism from you there. I've been telling people for years. Nobody believes me. And this racist host right here, William Davis Moore. All right, man. We all saw Glass. We saw it on two different continents. So let's get into it. Continental. Continental. This is the Continental episode. Well, I'm feeling a little continent myself. Incontinent? (laughs) Yeah, incontinent. Yeah? Well, there's a remedy for that. We're clear out now. Which is? Ooh. That's gonna make it worse. Are you oh. kidding me? Oh <laughs> yeah, man, Daddy needs his medicine. Corkin, where's your beer? I, yeah. I, I've got, I've got, I've got water. Flavored water. Oh. We'll pretend it's vodka. It's vodka. Who invited this guy? Flavored yeah, right. vodka water. <laughs> so it's glass. It was twenty million dollars. Pretty stinking cheap for this movie, man. Yeah. That was the budget. That was the budget. Okay. Twenty twenty million bones. They did pretty, some pretty good work with that twenty million. Yeah, well, so it was did. with Bloomhouse Productions, and they're like a low budget. They do low budget uh, horror films. Ooh. <laughs> I feel like Hollywood can't even ooh. fart without spending twenty million, and this guy made a whole goddamn movie. I think they spent it all on Sam Jackson. So I was going to say they <laughs> have such a good cast; they had to spend it all on the cast, right? I yeah. Mean, well, did um, uh, James McAvoy get extra for playing so many different parts? <laughs> he was listed in the credits. We, we can yeah, get that's what I'm saying. In the credits, he had all of the names. That was pretty that was sweet. Pretty sick. 35% though on the critic score. No! Yeah, 35%. Yeah. I man. tried not to look at it. I'm very shocked by that. It's kind of getting, it's kinda getting shit on on Twitter a little bit. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Can, can we just get like a quick, just a very quick without getting into details consensus. Did we enjoy the movie? Overall, yeah. I did enjoy well, it. I overall, enjoyed it. I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. I actually yeah. really, yeah. really enjoyed it. It had problems, but I, I enjoyed it overall. Okay, yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed the movie. Directed by M. Night Shyamalan. And uh, and distributed by Disney a little bit. Can you believe that, Chris? Just the tip, though. Really? Just the tip. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. Like it was Universal and Disney. They're like mortal well, enemies. Well, that's that's the first <laughs> time that started. Actually, not only are they mortal enemies, but they're mortal like uh, theme park enemies yeah. as well. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Uh, man, you know, they're like located like within five mile radius of yeah. each other. So and the yeah. fact that uh, M Night was able to sort of like orchestrate this deal where he was able to like bring characters and footage together. Yeah, it's crazy. I think that's a feat in of itself. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Stars Sam Jackson as Elijah Price. Uh, he played Big Don in True, True Romance. Just want to let everybody know that. Oh, hold on a second. Big D, you saying you eat pussy? Yeah, motherfucker. I eat everything. I eat the pussy. I eat the butt. I eat every motherfucking thing. You know, I never heard of Sam Jackson before, <laughs> and I'm glad that you recounted oh, his uh, uh, filmography. Thank you. I'm not done yet. I don't think I've ever seen a movie without Sam L. Jackson in. Pretty much, right? <laughs> I think he did everything. I don't think I've ever seen him in it. Not in one. If there's a black guy, it's Sam Jackson, probably. So it stars James McAvoy as the Horde. He was Mr. Tumnus in The Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe. Oh. <laughs> okay. We got Bruce Willis as David Dunn. He Who was, was he in? He was the voice of Mikey in Look Who's Talking. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> All right. I wonder how much money he got for that one. And we got Sarah Paulson as Dr. Staple. She was Annie in What Women Want. Oh, yeah. I remember why. Because I have a vagina. <laughs> Is there anything else I can get for you? Hmm. <laughs> Mel Skip Gibson. That one. Oh, that's right. That was the Mel Gibson. They want one. Mel Gibson. I want Mel Gibson. Mm-mm. Evil Gorkin, look, honestly, if you had a homosexual experience, who would it be with? <laughs> William is like crossing his fingers. Hoping that it's I, I'd, I'd have to go with some thought. I'd have to go with Chris Hemsworth, if I'm being honest. You got to, you got to uh, get the long hair, something to pull on, you know. Yeah. Okay, well, good. That's the end of that conversation. <laughs> Keep going. Man. What do you got? He's out. He's got short hair now, though. So you're, you're fucked. But look at those guns, man. Look at those Ooh. guns. That's that's what it's all about. It is. Well, when a- he wields a mighty hammer. We got Anya Taylor Joy as Casey. She was the feeder girl from a deleted scene in that hit flick, The Vampire Academy. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys gonna get your blood on or what? 
<laughs> Brutal. She was cut out of the Vampire Academy. <laughs> it's as bad as it gets, man. She's she's pretty. Uh, there's something about yeah. her that I. That she's I got a very uh, exotic face exotic look. Yeah, she looks kind of like an alien to me. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, you guys. She's got guys. like yeah, exactly. <laughs> Spencer Treat Clark as Joseph Dunn. It was nice to see him a little older. Yeah, it was really cool. He was Lucius in the he Gladiator. Aged well. He was. What was he? Lucius in the yeah, Gladiator? Yeah, that's right. He was in Gladiator. Right. What do you think happened to Lucius? I don't know, Uncle. I try to find their best parts, not their weakest. So. Yeah, well. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly by that Lucius talking <laughs> reference. Right. And finally, we have Charlene Woodward as Mrs. Price. But who is that? She was uh, movie, Elijah's mother. Yep, Mr. Oh, Elijah's mom. Her oh, makeup okay. was brutally it bad. Was so it bad. was, wasn't it? It looked like just somebody like slapped her with some like. It was like cauliflower. Or it something was like po- po- cauliflower like, past her lips. You know, you could see <laughs> like, the edges of it. You know, my god, yeah. they didn't put any budget in on that one. I wish that we That's had a twenty-one it. million dollar budget to fix that face. Evil, start us off. What up? What's your overall opinion of this movie? So I, I I really, really liked it, actually. I really enjoyed it. And I think what carried it mainly is the acting. James yeah. McAvoy takes it away, man. Takes yeah. it away. Killed it. Yeah, Killed he it. He's, he's yeah. with Sam L. Jackson and he's with Bruce Willis. And yet he takes the... He just made... It, I couldn't stop concentrating on what he was doing, man. He's a mate. And compared to Split, he had to change character in one scene, if you watched, as opposed to... Because in Split, he had to go... He like went into the dark or whatever to right. change character. Right. You see it more because of this flash thing that comes up. I was well impressed by that. Man. Oh, sure, Just that man. alone carried that movie for me. Just yeah, loved it. Uh, I read yeah. that he actually went through twenty three different characters in this movie, and they ended up cutting out yeah. three of them. Wow. So, but like what Corkin was saying, like those scenes where he was just changing over yeah. from yeah. one character to another. I mean. Golly, it man, he crazy. deserves some a lot of recognition yeah, for that. For sure. Is this an Academy Award like uh, acting? You think? You I think mean, it should be nominated. I, I, I think, I think he should, should. Maybe I don't know. It's it's early, but I mean, he was. There's no way they would they would nominate good. that movie. Yeah, like, but they. Sh- I think they should. Yeah, they should. They I should, mean, but they probably won't. This yeah. is a spoiler review, so I'm gonna say like that. His death scene at the end was probably one of the most impressive death scenes because he kept changing over. Yes. Yeah, while he had to die. He dying. just wouldn't fucking die. <laughs> yeah, I he know. wouldn't. I mean, it was the longest death scene of all time. <laughs> I'm going to stay in the light. No, I'm going to stay in the light. <laughs> I'm going to stay until I yeah. I'm going to stay in the light. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's JJ's alter ego right there. <laughs> all right, JJ, what do you think? I, I love this movie. I, I love that. I, I love that it was like so like low key. I kept reading uh, reviews about it and, and I was on several threads just trying to like see what people were, were saying about it. And they were like, oh my God, this movie has like no action and it has no this and it has no that. But these movies have never been about action. If you no, look at Unbreakable, no. it's not an action movie. No. It's, it's a very like low key trying to create like superheroes, ma- making them like a little bit more realistic. Yeah. Even Samuel Jackson's character, Mr. Glass in the movie says that he says we can do incredible things, but there is a limit to what we can do. Yeah, you know. So I don't know. I I, I loved I loved that they capped it at that point. That they never went like too incredible with it. Yeah, yeah I mean, cool. I think this one had the most action out of all three of them. Yeah, I agree. Oh yeah, it definitely did. Yeah, doubt. yeah. I, that, I mean, the showdown at the end was 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 pretty cool, man. And at the beginning, the first time they meet up, it yeah. was a pretty good fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I so I enjoyed that one. Listen, I had some issues with it. There was some really bad ADR. Like you, you can tell, like they went in and added lines afterwards, and it just stuck out like a sore thumb. Um, the container the, scene, the dialogue. <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't think Shyamalan is very good at writing dialogue because the dialogue was chunky and just kind of like the exposition was like so like just spot on. I, I this thing happens now. I'm going to explain to you exactly what just happened, and you're just like. Okay, you, I feel like you're kind of talking down to me a little bit, you know? Yeah. So, but other than that, I mean, I enjoyed like the pace of it. It was kind of slow in the middle um, when uh, Sarah Paulson was kind of like making them doubt themselves and all that. Um, but then it picked up, you know? I, I, yeah. I, I overall, like, I enjoy those moody kind of movies, you know what I mean? So I, uh, I overall, I really enjoyed well, it. Well, so. I, I want to say something about your criticism because sure. you, you hit on something that I find Uh-oh. really fascinating. <laughs> sure. No, and you're, I think he's absolutely right. 
yes, he did talk down to us, but keep in mind that you are an uber movie watcher. You know what I mean? Maybe. I you know. understand. It's hard to, it is hard to take you myself You understand away from movies that. Right. better, way better than the average person. Right. There, there are a lot of people who watch the movie like, a great example to me is uh, No Country for Old Men. Okay. You know, when the movie ended, they're like, well, I don't know what happened. I hate this movie. Yeah. You know, but we're like, what the fuck? That was like one of the greatest movies. It was a one great of the greatest ending. endings. Yeah. So the fact that he's catering to the average person, he's not really catering to you in this movie. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't take his writing to be negative because he, I mean, if he was to write a movie for us, right. like, the maj- like 80% of people would absolutely fucking hate it. Well, yeah, okay, I, 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 I guess so, and it's hard to take yourself out of that. Yeah. But I mean, there were certain points where the dialogue were just like, I don't know, just so, so Chubby. overly simple to make it simple for the audience. Like, uh, I don't know. I remember one that stuck out to me was when uh, Sarah Paulson's character was, they're, they're fighting, she's like on the phone, we need to get the security here right away. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, okay. I thought you already did that, you know? So everybody to the other side. <laughs> yeah. So there was, there was a few things like that, you know, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I, 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 I mean, my criticisms are completely on a professional level, completely technical. Um, but as a movie, I thought it was a good end to what we saw. I mean, I, I really don't have much to say. I mean, you guys said pretty much what I wanted to say. Um, I loved the color of this movie. That I, I, I did want to bring that up. Okay. Um, the cinematography was amazing. The color scheme, though, was yeah. great. I really liked, man, like how each character kept going into environments that kind of had this certain color, like the yellow and the purple, like the poster, the yellow well, and the purple and the green. Did you see his Twitter post about that? No. He So he, he posted on Twitter. Um that he had specific color themes for every character. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so he had green in mind for Bruce Willis's character sure. because green is like the color Poncho. of life and, and life-giving. And that uh, for McAvoy, he had yellow. So yellow, he imagined him like like a Buddhist monk or something. Yeah, he kept wearing like the yellow striped pants right. and like David Dunn had the green like yeah, jumper. Other uniforms. And for Mr. Glass, yeah. he had purple because he yeah, imagined purple. like a sense of like uh, royalty for this character mm-hmm. yeah and you like know? uh the the fighting at the end like a lot of the shots with david were in the grass with the green and a lot of the shots with the other guy he had yellows behind him yeah. if you look like autumn colors and stuff it was okay. really cool but, but I, I didn't pick up on that something yeah, that he good. didn't mention that i thought was kind of interesting was the color pink remember when sarah paulson's sarah character paulson. had the three of them inside of the room oh, yeah, the yeah, pink yeah. and the pink became pink became like a very evil color and yeah. it reminded me of one particular movie can you guys guess what movie i'm talking about dumbo Pink no. elephants. No. Reservoir dogs. Mr. H- pink. Harry Potter. The one where. The, oh, the, oh, what the yes, headmaster that, chick. That the headmaster bitch. bitch. Stephen King said that she was one of the most evil characters. Dolores he's, he's something or other. Umbridge. Yeah, Umbridge. Umbridge. Dolores Umbridge. Her whole like office was like completely. Corkin's been to Hogwarts. He knows it's over there. In <laughs> yeah, everybody in England goes to Hogwarts. <laughs> some of the stuff is filmed like five minutes away from where I live. <laughs> no, <laughs> we knew it. I knew it. In the cathedral. If you look in the yeah. background, you could see Corkin sitting there. You know, <laughs> he's a secret Death Eater. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe so evil. lives next door. Did no one tell you? No shit. Door. Well, let's go over there. Follow this. Get, knock on his door right now. <laughs> Might get us some views. We have Evil Corkin reacts on this show, and he is the roast master Flash. So let's roast this shit. Roast this movie, Evil. Roast it. What sucks? Well, put her on the spot. Dance, monkey. He's the issue. He's the issue. I really, really enjoyed the movie, but... What I did, well, so the the twists, the three twists, I would say, that was in the movie, um, some of them, one of them was a surprise, so it did surprise me that she was actually in on it. I didn't really think that she would be there to do all the bad shit that she did, but the other twists, I kind of had it. I knew that they were going to die before they died. I kind of, I felt it when you mm. feel it, yeah. but I can't roast, I can't roast them at that. It, I liked it. I enjoyed it. So I can't do it. I'm sorry to tell you, boys. But I can't roast something that deserves red recognition. And James McAvoy took it from me, so I can't do it. Well, I wow. Can't do it, but- I kind of. I mean, I agree with them. Like, um, you could kind of see the the deaths coming, you know. Um, but I felt like, uh, uh, well, the two bad guys like definitely expect them to die. But there was really no. So you got resolution from these guys, but you got no resolution really from Bruce Willis's character because he never overcame like his. Um, weakness to the water and they kind of built that up like you know that was going to be like a thing he was going to like uh overcome this weakness and then win the day but at the end of the day what was kind of interesting was that this whole movie kind of subverted those um what's good the line between good and evil because you had 
Glass, Mr. Glass, if you think about it, he actually ended up winning. He got yeah, he did. The whole point of Unbreakable yeah. was to uh, alert, make the world know that there were superheroes among us. So at the end of the day, in this one, he he was still on that same trajectory, and uh, it took him it took some self sacrifice for him to get it accomplished. But he won. He got the word out there, and superheroes are yeah, now can, known. Can we talk about that ending? Because that ending to me was very disturbing. There, there's a scene at the very I end. I hated it. Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, wasn't too big fan of it. And there's a problem with it, and I want to talk about it because I need somebody to help me understand it. Okay. Because <laughs> at, at the end of the movie, they're in Grand Central Station, I imagine. They're all holding hands, and they're all like looking toward to see how everybody's reacting to the news that there are superhumans amongst us. Right. And when they realize that people are like trending these videos, there's a sense of like accomplishment. Right. But I have a problem yeah. with that because Glass was a mass murderer. Yeah. There, yeah. there, there is no <laughs> sense of like celebration here because <laughs> she was an apologist for him. She was a, she was a big time apologist. We don't I mean, I kept thinking about the secret society. Are they good? Are they bad? And I think honestly, I I think they're good because look, are they going to kill off superheroes? Yeah, sure. But they're also going to kill off mad, kill the murdering guys. super villains. Right. Well, she said but it. But they said they were trying she to do it in a humane it. way. Yeah, she explained it like straight up. Yeah. She said, look, uh, we want the superhero. We want the savior. But that automatically creates a villain. Yes. So we have to just eliminate both. We yeah. can't have yeah. any. Like that. That's But it. she said in that meeting, like the, the humane way to do was to make them believe that they're not. That was like her. Or maybe I misunderstood that part. No, no, well, you're, that, you're absolutely yeah. right. Oh, yeah. What we're talking about is killing off the villains and the heroes. Yeah, yeah. she know? said once you have one, automatically another one's going to pop up. You right. can't, right. like, there has to be a balance. So are they really so. good or evil? That was, again, again, walking that line between good and evil. They're, McAvoy's character is ultimately a sympathetic character because he's a mental, mentally ill, and right. Kevin is really... You They're know, Hydra, you know? Guy, yeah. And, uh, and uh, the same thing with Bruce Willis, and she brought it up in the meeting, like... Okay, you're hurting these guys that haven't gone through their due legal process, too. So, yeah, so were they? The whole movie. They were doing the same, right? Thing. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> again, it's all. It was yeah. all about trying to say, like, listen, the line between good right. and evil is not as clear as the audience. Well, thinks. that was the great thing about the characters in general was that they all had a, a really good reason of why they were doing something. Mm -hmm. So, like, the belief that they had for why they were doing bad things. So, Glass. His belief of why he was doing bad things was to make good things happen. Yeah. Even though he created a, a lot of havoc, he wanted to make good things happen by creating superheroes. <clears throat> but uh, and on the other side, the the horde. His thing was he wanted to, to be the hero for the broken. You hurt him. Like mm -hmm. by by hurting the people that were hurting the broken. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, but he just did it in a really sick way. And then the the Hydra people, uh, they wanted to hurt people to protect people from the other two. Yeah. So it was like everybody had a really good, like honest reason and right. like heroic reason to do what they were doing. Right. And everybody just picked their own way of doing it. And that's great writing. I yeah. got one more thing for you guys. This is a little bit of a trivia question for you three guys. This is the fifth time that Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson have been in a movie together. <laughs> Can you guys name the oh, other ones? Oh man, uh, Unbreakable obviously. We got Unbreakable, um, we got Glass. Okay. Okay. So that's you counting. Okay. That one. So Glass is counting as one of the five. Um, die Hard. Die, die hard. hard with a Vengeance. Yep. Okay. We got uh, two more guys. Ooh. Uh, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. And there's another one, but oh, I don't think it counts. Movie. That war movie. I thought there was like a. Uh, Does it count uh, if they're in the same movie? And they Desert don't Storm interact? movie that they were in. Well, okay. So you got one movie left. Because and Loaded they Weapon. Both, they are is not yes they're that's not it. in this they're what, not what they're both in the same loaded it's a, weapon it's a cameo oh. they're in the same movie but they're not in the same scene so that that makes it a but little does it more count <laughs> yeah okay. they're in the same All movie right. that, is that emilio <laughs> estevez yes oh, yeah, i go, love that classic. movie man <laughs> i don't know if you guys remember the scene but it was they were recreating the scene from um lethal weapon lethal weapon yeah the helicopter is like <laughs> shooting at the, at the little beach house they blow it up <laughs> they blow it up and then after it blows up john mcclain yeah. Comes out of dust and goes, what are you guys doing? Like, <laughs> ah, 10-14, but Pacific Coast Highway. No! This is 8-14, Pacific Coast Highway. 10 is two blocks up that way. Sorry, my mistake. Is this this address? I'm like, no, dude, that house is like a couple blocks <laughs> down the street. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to get back real quick because uh, Corkin brought up all the different twists and stuff like that. And, uh, and you said you just watched Split yesterday, right? 
I did. I watched Split yesterday and the day before that I watched Unbreakable. I'd already seen Unbreakable yeah. like years ago, but I hadn't seen Split until yesterday, so it's all pretty fresh for me. All right, cool, cool. cool. I was so well I'm, impressed by McAvoy. So I wanted to ask you, because one of the one of the reveals in this movie was that supposed to be that um, uh, Kevin Wendell Crumb's dad was on the same train with Bruce Willis. Yeah. But they revealed Mr. that Glass in Split, it. right? I, I was I had no I idea on that one. That one did surprise us, to be fair. Okay. I was, yeah, I I was pretty surprised on that. Uh, but, I mean, it, it just no. gave them a good reason to get Mr. Glass killed, right? Dude, his death was brutal. When oh that dude God. like broke his bones, and like especially the ribs, man. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he hit the ground, I'm like, oh, shit. What did you think <laughs> of uh, Samuel L. Jackson playing like uh, the catatonic, eye-twitching kind of thing? It felt forced to me. When he was sedated. Yeah, yeah. he was like, oh, like he's twitching his yeah. eye. Yeah, I felt like really kind of like, okay, act fucked up now, Sam Jackson. Go. No, no, but don't you know that's his real fucking demeanor? Like, he was just being normal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was just thinking, motherfucker. So when he's acting all the other times, he's keeping his eye yes, from actually exactly. twitching. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> it's all those years of coke, dude. <laughs> there you go. So we're giving it a thumbs up. All right, we'll start recording. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to give it, well, I wanted to give it an 8 out of 10. I really did. I wanted to give it like an 8 out of 10, but... I'm going to have to downgrade to a 7.5 because I did enjoy it. Can't say I didn't enjoy it. Amazing movie. Really enjoyed it. But it does have a lot of gaps and holes in it. And yeah, 7.5. Some All of right. my favorite people have gaps and holes. <laughs> <laughs> Good Good job. Job. Moving, moving right along. Good job. <laughs> That's why we keep them around here. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, where did it come from look, well it. if you liked Unbreakable yeah. and you like Split I think watch this movie it's just gonna fi- you got it's to. gonna finish off the trilogy for you if you didn't like, if you did not enjoy the other movies then don't watch this it's not for you but if you enjoyed the other ones I think it fits it's on par with Unbreakable and it, I don't think it's as good as Split but I think it really like rounds out the trilogy, and I think it's a must watch. Yeah, yeah. Split was a that's different some, kind of. That's movie. something that you're not thinking about, guys. It is a third movie. It is a trilogy, and third movies are notorious for being fucking shit. Yeah. So at least they did all right. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did yeah, okay. not too bad. I, I, yeah, I don't necessarily agree with the thirty. 30- Five percent or wherever it was on Rotten Tomatoes. The critics suck these days. I yeah, hate they're the critics. always they're always they shitting on everything. They so, suck. Yeah, I give it I give it a good B minus C plus, man. I I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. There was some parts where I was like, oh god, that's pretty bad. But um, yeah, uh, overall it was it was a good time, man. All right, I'm gonna go uh, two point seven breaks out of five. Nice. And that's just because the ending was so weak, it, it kind of hurt my feelings. Yeah. All right, guys, it's going to do it for this episode of Miscast Entertainment Movie Reviews and our Glass Review. And I just like give a big shout out to our amazing guest, Evil Cork and Reacts. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Thank it's you for good, coming guys. on the show, really man. Good. All right, if you guys want to check out his channel and subscribe to his stuff, he's got really seriously awesome reactions to some really seriously sick shit. It's right down there in the description. And as always, if you like our content, hit that subscribe button. And if you hit the bell next to it, you'll get notified of all of our future content. Then head on over to MiscastEntertainment.com. We have some sweet-ass merch. Ooh. Check that shit out, man, because it's fucking awesome. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Class, split feelings or an unbreakable love? I feel like I said unbreakable fucked up. Glass, split feelings or, or <laughs> glass split feelings are you laughing at me god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> i forget that Don't you guys can see me over me. there <laughs> <laughs>